Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue to build on our delay plugin series. And in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a feedback loop. So last tutorial, we created the most basic delay effect that we could create where you heard a dry sound, but then you heard a slightly delayed effect sound right behind it, but you only heard one repeat. How do we get that continuous echo effect to happen? The way that we do that is with this feedback loop, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. So this is called a feedback delay, because what we do is we take the signal and we feed it back into itself. Uh, before we get started, just want to tell you about our audio programming community. Uh, it's on Discord. We have nearly 7,000 members now, uh, audio programmers of all different levels, and we welcome you to join us. Come join us at theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash community. And also we have a jobs board where we have opportunities for audio programmers who are both getting into the industry and also experienced audio programmers. And you can find out more about that at theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash jobs. So let's go ahead and get started. And the way I'm going to start this is by showing you where we're at currently. So I have this plugin. It doesn't have a UI yet. It's just uh, it's just a delay algorithm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the uh, the the beat. It's a uh, it's a little '80s beat from Ableton, and you're going to hear one delayed signal that's going to be happening right behind the uh, the 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 dry beat. And what I want you to pay attention to is that you only hear one delay after I stop the uh, stop the beat. OK, so here we go. So we hear that we have a delay effect, but it's not echoing out in the way that we would normally hear uh, with a delay effect. So that's what we're going to do with this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Before we jump into the code, I thought that I'd show you some of my notes to see if they might be helpful for you. So I'm very much a beginner in digital signal processing, and this is by no means coming from an expert perspective. So if you have better ways or more experienced ways that are clearer, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. But this is my understanding. So this is what's called a block diagram. So you see this many times in digital signal processing books, also in electrical engineering books. and this just basically shows the signal flow of our audio chain. And it looks like something complicated if you're seeing it for the first time, and it can look very intimidating, especially as they get larger. Uh, but once you break them down, you can see that uh, they very clearly actually describe the way that the signal is supposed to flow. And I'm going to do my best to give you a brief explanation of what's happening here. So. On the left hand side, we have what's called X to the N. OK, X just means the input signal N just means where in the input signal we're at. N is um, essentially the position in the array. OK, and then we're going to come back to this to this plus sign here in a minute. But let's just let's just imagine that it's just a straight line that goes from X to the N to Y to the N. OK. Y to the N is the output. That's the signal that we actually hear coming out of the speakers. OK, if we only had X to the N and a straight line that went to the Y to the N, then that would just mean that uh, it's an input signal and it's going to the output signal and we're not doing anything to it. OK, it's just input signal to the output signal. But we see that we have this other part here, which is if we look at the arrows, it's actually going back on itself. OK. And that is what we call the feedback delay. OK, so what if we just follow this, let's not worry about the plus for now. So as we're going down the line, we have our input signal. Then at this point, what happens is that we're copying the input signal back. And what we're doing is we're multiplying it by a gain. So if you remember our last tutorial, what we did was we took the when we actually took the um, signal and we multiplied it and, and we uh, we copied it that we did it by a factor that was less than one um, and that's all that is that's just the gain factor and then what we did was we read from that signal in the past and that's what this delay amount is okay that just that that just means 
how much uh, we're delaying this signal by. So you remember that we took the signal, we copied it, and then what we did was we read from it back in the past. And that's anytime you see the Z to the minus one, that just means that we're reading from somewhere back in the past, a delay amount. And then what we're doing is we're taking that signal and we're combining it with the with the input signal that's still coming in and we're adding those together okay and if you think about it then what happens is that as we go through time when this happens again that if we're taking if we're taking that actual signal that has been added with the feedback loop and we're copying it again we're not only copying x to the n but we're copying x to the n along with whatever is in this feedback loop so and if we do that and we're multiplying it times a delay gain uh, a gain that's less than less than 1.0 then what's going to happen is that as the signal goes through the delayed signal is going to get softer and softer and that's how you get that delay or echo type of effect okay and once again that z to the minus one just refers to how much are we delaying this signal by and then it's just feeding back into itself and that's really it that's that's what we've done and we've done actually 95 percent of the work already so far and so i'm going to show you how to do this final part right now so we have two functions that we've done here we've done fill buffer which is where uh, if I just make a comment here we can say that was copying the input signal to a delay buffer and then we have this read from buffer which was read from the past in the delay buffer then add it back to the main buffer okay and now what we're going to do is we're actually going to do fill buffer again okay and the reason that we're going to do that is where once again so if i just copy this comment here just so just to make it clear for people who are not not um getting what i mean uh so we fill the buffer which has just the um just has the original input signal then we're reading from that buff we're reading from somewhere in the past we're adding it back to the main buffer and then if we did that again if we copy the input signal to the delay buffer we're not only getting the input signal but we're also getting the delayed signal as well so that's why we're doing fill buffer again and what you'll hear is that we're going to actually hear a delay and it's going to be a little bit different than what we heard the first time around at the very beginning of this tutorial so let's just open Ableton back up I will open the project back up once the beach ball stops here we go and all right here we go so i'm going to play and now you're going to hear a actual echo so you hear how that's different from what we did the first time around so that's why we get that feedback loop and that's how we get that actual echo effect so I could end this tutorial here and uh, and if you're just looking for the very basics then then those are the very basics but I thought what we could do as well is um, we have some different conventions that are happening here in our our code and the way that it's being written and what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually uh, be able to clean this up a little bit and make it a little bit more consistent and um, possibly if it's not going to be too much maybe even move this into a class of its own so what i mean by that is that the fill buffer the fill buffer function has is taking this buffer get right pointer right but when i do read from buffer it's only taking the buffer and the delay buffer 
as arguments. It's not actually taking a write pointer or a read pointer. And the reason that we did that was because uh, we had to do, because of the way, the way that we need to write the code, we need to actually call the read pointer when we actually call add from with ramp. I want to make this a little bit more consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, make this make this code a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to delete these comments here because I feel that they um, actually not from there. Sorry, from so if we look here, so for now we have channel data that is an argument. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and what I wanted to do is I wanted to be consistent with uh, read from buffer. So I wanted to, to read something more like buffer channel buffer size delay buffer size. Okay, so I'm going to just do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start switching this around a little bit so that and this makes it easier to read. So you keep everything as consistent as possible uh, through your code base. So if you're doing function calls that are calling on the same objects, I find that it's easier if you try to keep the arguments as consistent as possible. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually do this in stages. So, uh, so you can actually see what I mean here. Okay. Decided not to use this feedback buffer function. So, so there we are. So we should be okay so far. And now I'm going to paste that there because that's new. And then, great. So now we have a couple little, a couple little things. So the buffer dot get right pointer. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move that into fill buffer now. And what you'll see is that this is starting to clean up what we have in our process block. I'd like to keep the process block as clean and clear as possible. And this, uh, this helps with that, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to localize where I get the right pointer in fill buffer now. So rather than getting it outside of it in the process block, I'm now doing that inside this function. Okay. And I'm going to do this in stages once again. So here we have, we have uh, channel data. So what I'm going to do to make this consistent with what I've done down below is I'm actually going to call this directly just so, just so this is all consistent. So rather than doing channel data, I'm going to do buffer. I'm going to call that directly in the function. Okay. I just feel that that is a bit clearer. Now we have this one part here, channel data plus num samples to end. Okay. I didn't like that. I felt like that was ambiguous what was happening there. So what I could do is the nice thing about buffer uh, about getting the right pointer is that you can actually specify what sample that you actually want to start with when you do this. So if I do buffer dot get right pointer, we have another, another way that we could use this function where we can actually specify the sample index that we want to start with. And that's what I'm going to do here. Okay. So here I'm going to say channel. This is maybe something that's a little bit more um, advanced for people that, that are maybe a little bit more experienced, uh, but I hope that you find it, I hope that you find it helpful. So there we go. So now this is more consistent to me, you know, so it's not, um, calling all different types of ways. So now I'm going to do something else, right? So buffer size and delay buffer size, can actually be called from within the function. Um, and I don't see any reason. So, so what I like to do here is I'm actually going to take this, I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to put it down here for now. And then because, uh, we need buffer size and delay buffer sizes variables down here below. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of these as arguments. Okay, we can see that this actually really cleans up the function calls quite a bit. Okay. You'll see what you'll see what I'm doing here. So here we got buffer size and delay buffer size. I'm going to take those out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to localize these like that. OK, so it calls from within the function rather than outside the function. And I'm going to do the same thing for this. Get rid of buffer size and delay buffer size. And then I need to, of course, do that in the header files as well. So I don't like to have function calls that have a million arguments unless it absolutely needs to. So here we go. And now we have two functions that are calling in a very, in a very consistent way. We have the buffers first and then the channel second. Okay, that feels like that cleans it up for me a lot more. And now what I could do so we see that we see that this is getting even cl clearer now. And now what I could do is I could actually make a, another function. So I'll, so if I take this, I think, OK, I can pull this out into a function. Maybe this could be something like um, maybe um, iterate buffer uh, update up, update buffer positions. Sounds like a good update buffer position sounds like a good one and then maybe it could take an argument of the buffer and the delay buffer and then down here I'll do void all this business and what did I call it update buffer positions update buffer positions and I will fill that in in just a moment. And I will just do that. And then what I could do is I could just copy where from from right here. So it just takes the buffer and the delay buffer as arguments. OK, just references to those as arguments. Now, of course, I need to copy these back to the header again. So we got void update buffer positions. So now we see that that is all consistent. OK, so I'm just going to build this just to make sure this actually works as intended. I'm not going to do this uh, right now, but if I wanted to, you could see how this would very easily pull out into its own class, right? Maybe we'll do that next tutorial, pulling this out into its own class and, um, and doing some, some other cool stuff to it. But we see that that looks very clean now. I'm very, that, that is actually very, uh, that actually makes me very happy. So I just want to make sure this actually works as it did before because we want to make sure. Great. So that works just as we intended to. And that's really awesome. So next tutorial, what we'll do is we will actually put parameters to this. So in the down here in read position, we can actually take this time that the signal is delayed and we can actually adjust this and make this a parameter that the user will be able to modify to change the delay amount, right? And we can also change the gain, which would change the amount of feedback that the uh, that that would be happening in the delay, right? So that would be these uh, G um, parameters. So we will do that in the next tutorial. So I hope that you enjoyed this a little bit of a shorter one, but I hope that uh, that it was very helpful for you. If you liked it, be sure to give a like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and I will see you next time.